And we are starting off with the latest from Sri Lanka, where after months of turmoil, the country has a new president. Ranul Vikramasinghe, who has been serving as the acting president of Sri Lanka, has been elected as the eighth executive president of the country. The six-time prime minister has been elected with 134 votes, defeating the ruling SLPP leader, Dulas Alaparoma, who got 82 votes. While the third contender and the leader of the leftist Janata Vimukti Permula party, Anura Kumar Desanayake, got only three votes. 223 lawmakers cast their votes to elect the new president on Wednesday morning. Two abstained, while four votes were found invalid during the counting. And after emerging victorious, the newly elected president, Ranan Vikramasinghe, said that the country is in a very difficult situation and that there are, there are big challenges that have to be dealt with. The economy of the country today is in a very difficult place. Young men and women are asking for change in the system. There are many problems in the world and we must proceed without getting caught in them. To go forward, we need to come up with a new program. What the people are asking of us is not the old politics. The parliament must unite in the face of these issues. Wishes have been pouring in for Vikramasinghe. He has the Herculean task of bringing Sri Lanka's crippling economy back on track. The former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa's son, Namal Rajapaksa, and SJB leader Harsha De Silva took to Twitter to convey their wishes to the new president. Vikramasinghe's election as the country's president has once again sparked protests on Colombo streets. Demonstrators gathered outside the presidential office demanding Vikramasinghe's resignation as he is considered to be loyal to the Rajapaksa family. I think it, it's, it's a sad day though. It's a sad day not just uh, for the people of this country but for whole of the world I guess because it seems that the entire world is sort of uh, accepting this most unethical manner of leadership because this is someone who did not win, a, win an election. He's someone who was rejected by the people's mandate. And then such a per what, what, how ethical is it for someone like him, let alone lead a government, lead a country, be the head of a state? Born into a prominent family of politicians and businessmen, Vikramasinghe was made the country's youngest cabinet minister at the age of 29 by his uncle and then president, Junius Jayavardhini, in 1978. In 1994, he became the leader of the United National Party following assassinations that wiped out several of his senior colleagues. He was recently appointed as Sri Lanka's prime minister by former president Gotabaya Rajapaksa after his brother Mahinda Rajapaksa stepped down from the post owing to massive protests. However, his loyalty towards the Rajapaksas made him a target of massive public outrage. On the 9th of July, Vikramasinghe announced that he was willing to step down as Prime Minister after protesters swarmed through central Colombo and set a part of his personal residence ablaze. Our correspondent, Dasunia Thoda, has been tracking all those developments in Colombo. She sent us this report. Take a look. Sri Lanka's parliament, in a historical first of its kind today, elected the eighth executive president of Sri Lanka, and that being the acting president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, who emerged victorious in the parliamentary polls by securing 134 votes to his name. Now, soon after the announcement was made that Ranil Vikramasinghe is now the eighth executive president of Sri Lanka, fresh protests broke out in the commercial capital of Colombo, demanding for Ranil Vikramasinghe also to step down. Now, majority of the protesters who have carried out protests for months on end, demanding the Rajpaksas to step down, are of the view that President Ranil Vikramasinghe is also a loyalist of the Rajapaksas and is also partly to blame for Sri Lanka's worsening economic crisis. Nevertheless, all eyes will now be on the Sri Lankan parliament and at how best the newly elected president, who will take oath tomorrow, will be able to secure and garner the support and the confidence of parliamentarians to make and form an all-party government. 
which is set to take place in the coming weeks here in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's political crisis appears to have some form of solution as of right now. Nevertheless, the bigger picture will always be Sri Lanka's spiraling economic crisis with much of the population waiting for days on end in fuel queues as the country has been facing its worst fuel shortage to date. Stay with We On as we track Sri Lanka's political as well as economic crisis. Reporting for We On from Colombo, I'm Dasunia Kauder. And for more on this, we were earlier joined by M. Ashraf Hedri, who is the Afghanistan ambassador to Sri Lanka. Take a listen in. The new president needs uh, time. Uh, I think he's uh, made it uh, very clear that the challenges are enormous, that, that it needs uh, time to uh, address them, address them internally and also with the uh, support of the international community. And so the people of uh, Sri Lanka really need to uh, be patient and give him the time that he or any other, you know, uh, a candidate or successor would need to address the challenges uh, facing uh, Sri Lanka. And remember, those challenges are not just uh, in Sri Lanka, but in so many other countries that uh, uh, are grappling with those uh, challenges and, and they've been working over now the past two, three years uh, to address them. So the, uh, you know, just uh, newly elected uh, president needs time. And I think he was very clear uh, on uh, his uh, goals when he was, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, pecked as the uh, acting president, but also when he was, uh, you know, uh, pecked as the prime minister. And I think, uh, yes, uh, people could be dissatisfied with his uh, performance in the past, but he's come forward to, uh, you know, offer his uh, assistance and support uh, for the nation at a time when Sri Lanka needs it the most. And I think uh, uh, people need to be patient and give him the time that he needs to address the challenges. And those challenges are very specific when it comes to specific needs, electricity, energy, gas, but, you know, petrol, and uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, food. Uh, so it takes time, and I think uh, uh, the uh, new president should be uh, working very soon with India and other countries in the region, China, of course, and as well as uh, the West European Union, the United States and other countries and friends of uh, Sri Lanka to shore up the support the country needs to address those very specific and acute uh, needs of the Sri Lankan people. He needs to ensure uh, stability and I think uh, needs to end uh, violence and all these riots uh, for now increasingly no reason, um, uh, but, you know, for the people to be patient and wait for the uh, newly elected uh, president to uh, work out uh, medium to long term solutions with the IMF to bail out uh, Sri Lanka's uh, collapsed uh, economy on the one hand and to really get food and fuel to the people of Sri Lanka. And I think that's what you know, really the people of Sri Lanka right now need and what is the, that's what is driving these uh, protests and dissatisfaction of uh, Sri Lankans with the, uh, the government, even with the uh, newly elected, elected uh, president. So the sooner he, uh, you know, um, uh, moves on these issues with the IMF and the World Bank and other donors, um, and of course, friends of Sri Lanka, the, of course, uh, sooner he would be able to address uh, uh, those needs and uh, challenges, and the sooner he would be able to help stabilize the situation uh, in Sri Lanka. And he can do so. Uh, of course, uh, you know, so many efforts are already uh, in the motion. He actually helped set them uh, and, and the motion uh, when he was, uh, you know, picked as the prime minister. And now he's continued that uh, effort. So now with, uh, you know, so many votes in the parliament and uh, hopefully with the people, support of the uh, Sri Lankan people, he should be able to move on all those uh, efforts to address those challenges uh, facing uh, you know, suffering uh, Sri Lankans, but it needs time. And I think all Sri Lankans at this time need come to ca come together on the same page to help, you know, s rescue themselves and their country. I think that's the, that's one thing that, you know, external actors cannot do, including uh, neighbors, as much as 
foremost, India has done so much uh, to help uh, uh, Sri Lanka address its challenges. But Sri Lankans, at the end of the day, and their political leadership, as they just demonstrated in their parliament, that needs to address their challenges. So the newly elected president does need, you know, um, time and support from their people and, and, the, and, and their representatives in the parliament to address those challenges. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.